It's undeniable that bikes can be ridiculously expensive. Even in the aftermath of the COVID boom, the blowout prices of some bikes are still well out of reach for many average consumers. And on the flip side, spending too little on a bike actually doesn't do you any favors either. Really cheap, complete bikes will likely not use modern standards or progressive geometry and could ultimately end up costing more to maintain and upgrade down the line. So what are you left to do if you wanna get into mountain biking but don't have a ton of cash? Well, in this video, one option for getting a solid, trail-worthy ripper for less money than you'd expect. So this is a bike that I featured on the channel a few months back. The bike that I tested was a complete bike from Poseidon, but you can buy just the frame set by itself and it's really affordable. That's right, we're talking about building your own hardtail mountain bike and the key things to look for to minimize your cost. Now this frame set here is the Poseidon Norton hardtail frame. It happens to belong to my buddy Brian, but truthfully these ideas can apply to any budget build. So this particular frame, brand new, can be had for $300 US and it's really got everything that you'd want in a modern hardtail. The geometry is progressive, it uses modern standards like a threaded BSA bottom bracket, a tapered head tube, and boost hub spacing with through axle mounting. And as an added bonus, the frame set even includes a headset, which will ultimately save you about 50 bucks. It's got internal routing for a dropper seat post, and the brake and shift cables can either be run internally or externally for convenience. The frame is designed around a 27.5 inch wheel for some extra poppy fun on the trail, but it can also run a 29 inch wheel, as long as your tire isn't too wide. Now, if you're curious, Brian actually decided to build this particular Norton up as a mullet, meaning 27.5 inch wheel for the rear and 29 inch up front for sort of a best of both worlds compromise. So the point is that for $300, you get, in my opinion, a perfect canvas for creating your own modern aggressive trail bike. And because the frame uses modern standards, sourcing parts for the bike is actually pretty easy. And that's kind of the point here. If you start with the right frame, then building your own mountain bike becomes really easy because parts are abundant and they're largely available secondhand for pretty cheap, which is really the part that's gonna save you a ton of money. For instance, this fork, which is a RockShox 35 Gold RL, I found for 150 bucks on OfferUp. Now it's basically new and this is a part that somebody took off of their stock bike right away to upgrade to something nicer. And this is what we call a takeoff component. Basically something that someone else took off of their bike but is pretty much brand new. Now people do this all the time with forks and wheels and even brakes and drivetrains sometimes. Anyways, this fork is considered entry level and it retails for about 350 to 400 bucks right now. It's the same fork that you'd find on a lot of mid-level complete bikes. And it's really nice because it's an air fork which is gonna be way lighter than the heavier coil forks typically found on entry-level complete bikes. These wheels are also takeoffs from another bike. Again, because the frame and fork uses modern standards, you just need to find something with 148 millimeter spacing in the rear and 110 millimeter spacing in the front, which is commonly known as boost spacing. Basically, the majority of secondhand takeoffs are going to use this standard, at least in 2024. The drivetrain is a Box Prime 9, which totally covers the range of gears that you need. And to be totally honest, for a mountain bike where matching a specific pedaling cadence isn't as critical, nine speeds is actually plenty. The nine speed cassette here covers a massive range from 11 to 50 teeth, and the entire drivetrain costs about 200 bucks brand new. Now, of course, if you wanted, you could probably even put together a lightly used Shimano Dior 11 speed drivetrain for even less. Now for brakes, these ones here, I believe are the Shimano MT200 hydraulic disc brakes. And honestly, you can't go wrong with these. Now this particular set, I believe, is a takeoff from another bike, but these can be had for less than 100 bucks for the pair, again, even less if you buy secondhand. Now the Shimano Dior cranks are really affordable as well, and while they're not super light, they do hold up to some serious abuse. This is also a basic BSA threaded bottom bracket, which are really affordable, and they're available everywhere. A rigid seat post can be had for a few bucks, but if you wanna go with a dropper seat post, and I highly recommend that you do, you can pick up something used or go with something like the Brand X Ascent seat post or something similar, which offers really good value per dollar. In my opinion, there's really no need to be spending much more than 100 to $150 on a dropper seat post. And that just leaves your finishing kit. Things like stem and handlebars, pedals, saddle and grips, which don't really need to be anything but functional. Now you can experiment with different parts here because again, they're all pretty affordable and they're gonna be widely available second 
second hand. So all in, I would estimate that Brian probably spent less than $700 on this build, and that's buying a combination of new and used parts. Now admittedly, I did donate a few parts to this build, like the front wheel and one of the tires and the fork. And that kind of brings up another point. If you're just getting into mountain biking and you've got a group of friends who are already into the sport, then it's highly likely that they've got part spins of their own that I'm sure you could rummage through and save even more. I would say that honestly, the biggest hurdle to building up a hardtail is just making sure that the parts are compatible with each other and having a basic knowledge of how to set up a bike. And don't get me wrong, I totally understand that that can be a daunting task, but if you're willing to take your time and do some research, and most of all, ask your local bike shop whenever you have questions, you'll definitely learn a ton, which turns out is actually really rewarding. Plus, by taking your time and learning the process of building a bike, which honestly for a hardtail mountain bike in particular is pretty simple, you'll be developing a valuable skill set which I think is a good thing. Now, sure, by building up a budget frame set with secondhand parts, you're not gonna end up with the latest top shelf carbon race thing, but I'll be perfectly honest here. You don't need it. Take it from Eric who runs the Spindat channel, who by the way is the person who actually designed the Poseidon Norton frame to be a budget platform for modern parts. His channel's ethos is basically that you don't need to spend a ton of money to have an awesome time on a bike. And frankly, we should all adopt his bike philosophy a little bit more because Brian's Norton here turned out great. Now, some of you may note that the complete Norton bike is on sale and available for something like $700 US right now, which is a pretty awesome deal. Now, if you're not into the idea of building up your own mountain bike and you just want to hit the trail as soon as possible, then this is actually a pretty awesome entry point into mountain biking. But you should note that to upgrade a stock Norton to something like what Brian has here, you will be looking at several hundred more dollars in components. And once you do upgrade, I would argue that many of the stock parts on the Norton don't have a ton of resale value. For instance, the stock fork is a really heavy entry-level coil fork, and the stock bottom bracket and cranks use a square taper system, which is slightly outdated and only really found on entry-level bikes. Basically, what I'm saying is that if you go the complete build route, you'll ultimately end up spending more in the long run if you eventually choose to upgrade. Also, if you're curious, the stock complete Norton in size medium with no pedals weighed in at 34 and a half pounds on my scale, whereas Brian's size medium with pedals weighs in at 32 pounds. Now, these are a generic pair of composite pedals, which typically run a about 350 grams or so. So we're really looking at something like just over 31 pounds, which is over three pounds lighter than the complete build. Now, honestly, 95% of that weight savings probably comes from the air fork upgrade, but that's actually a pretty big difference. And in my opinion, will have a noticeable effect. Anyways, I guess what I'm trying to say here is that there's a lot of complaining by consumers going on about bike prices right now. And in a lot of cases, I tend to agree. High-end complete bikes and blingy aftermarket components are getting a little bit out of hand. But that doesn't mean you can't still have a solid trail-worthy ripper for under $1,000. In a lot of cases, you can probably build something similar to Brian's Norton here for even less if you're willing to keep tabs on your local secondhand market, do a little bit of research to ensure compatibility, and bug your crew for components that they might be willing to part with. All right, well, that's it for this one. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. I'll try and get back to as many as I can. Thanks again for watching, and thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.